This is the Unturn 3.6.8.0 tutorial. I find that other tutorials don't teach everything, so throughout this series I'm going to literally build a small town and go step by step. Alright, so you go to Workshop, Editor, uh, you name your town. I'll just, I'll just erase this and do it again. Okay, you name your town. You, uh, it all has to be one word because if you do uh, faces, it erases it. Anyway, name your town, all one word. Uh, you choose your size, you add it, you click on it, and then you edit it. Uh, okay, so you get to this screen. Uh, to look around, you right click and move your mouse. To move around, you right click and use WASD. Uh, shift makes you go faster, just like you're running in game. Shift, shift. Alright, uh, so you just start with an open expanse of water. I like starting with ground, uh, a flat level area to, to work with. Uh, it comes up black, I'm not sure why, maybe because it's bottom of the ocean, couldn't tell you. Uh, make sure I got everything here. And then you go to, uh, you go to materials. Uh, and you just, you just bake it globally, and that makes it uh, the material based on elevation, the closer to the water ocean level, the more beach it is, it'll just be sand. Uh, if you raise the elevation, it'll be grass and such. Alright, let's make a, uh, oh yeah, Q is up and down, uh, raise just hills and stuff. You can either just tap Q or click on it in the bottom left hand corner. So let's just make a hill over here, nice mountain shaped mountain. Sometimes you gotta change your camera angle to make sure you're getting everything nicely. Tap Q. A little smaller, gonna make some motion. Alright, to make it more smooth and just natural, you press W. Uh, you can change the strength and the size, but full strength I find works pretty good unless you're working near something. Smooth everything out. And now we're going to bake it again. You're going to see the elevation where it becomes grass and beach. I think the exact elevation is uh, point o or o point one two. But now you'll see there's there's no grass or anything, right? Uh, so you go to details, use the sliders. See how much? But if you just do the basic, kind of what it looks like. Let's say you want a whole ton of these sliders. There are so many flowers, just to slow down my uh, processor. Flower explosion. Step back to normal. Cool. You got a basic, uh, basic ground. So uh, you want some trees. You can either put them in individually by selecting the type of tree and just clicking, or you press that and it's, it's the same thing as uh, same thing as the grass and the flowers and stuff. Same with the sliders, exactly the same thing. Uh, except trees are a lot bigger, so I actually we bogged down my laptop quite a lot when it's loading up, as you can tell. We gotta fix that. Put it back to normal. Oh, 
trees are something that Lake Local works on. Uh, I find that the materials and the details, uh, it doesn't work so much. It's just global anyway, even if you search local. But uh, trees, Lake Local, it does it locally. Uh, it seems like it didn't get rid of my trees I placed by hand, so let's just clear those up. Uh, w, adjust the uh, and then you can adjust the radius as well. Uh, Q to put them back in. Rebake it. There we go. So I was thinking of building a little town here, a little house, something. Clear cut a little bit, of, a little bit of land. But I think maybe starting with a highway would be better. Uh, working around a town can be hard, but working around a highway is easy. So highways, you go to environment and roads. Uh, there's tons of different types of highways. Uh, roads, train tracks, trails, just basic roads. You just, to, to place it, you just have to... Uh, Okay, I was going to say, uh, make the road around the, uh, the land mass. Might as well extend it a bit. Rebake it. There we go. Got a nice large land mass to work with. Put my trees back. Eventually, there we go. Alright, so roads are a little confusing at first. Uh, basics are easy. Point, point, bake, there it is. Uh, you can change the size. wonder how big you can go. I've never done this big. So you can go that big. You can probably go bigger. But that's, that's ridiculous. Let's go back down. Okay. So, things that you shouldn't do. Right angle turns. Does not look pretty. But you just do a couple of points in the turn. Looks a little better. Now, if you click on each point and press W, it breaks it in half between that point or the two points on either side. Well, that took me a while to figure out. But the more points you have, the smoother your corner will be. Same with going up hills. Uh, the more points of contact you have, the smoother it'll be. But you want to put them in with W and not by clicking them manually. Oh, you can also move your points around by clicking on whatever point you want to move and pre pressing E on where you want it to go. Just trying to smooth out this corner a little bit. a little better. Just put it by hand. Gets a little zigzaggy. Okay. There we go. Do a nice corner and use the W. Just do a basic shape of a corner and then split it up using W and it makes it a lot smoother. The only way I know how to delete roads is clicking on each individual point and pressing delete. It's very time consuming and slightly irritating. There might be a faster way, I don't know it. Uh, if you find a way, post it in the comments. But that's how you delete the roads. And all I have to do to fully delete them, like, you're not, those roads aren't going to fade it. With no points left, when you rebake it, roads are gone. Okay, let's start with the basic outline for a road. Uh, keep it straight as possible, not too many abrupt turns, make it look fluent. Like I said, wide apart, keep it straight. Uh, if you did all the dots close to together by hand, um, you would end up with a lot of little zigzags, and it just, it just wouldn't look, look as nice. So you set your 
basic outline for your road. Like this. Uh, come up to a corner, like I was saying, you don't want to do it 90 degrees. So I'll do an extra couple of points in this corner. Down the hill, and off to grandma's house. All right, that's the basic outline for a road. As you can see, there's uh, the grass goes over the road, the earth goes over the road, but we'll fix that. At some points, the road's also not touching the ground. That's because we did so few points. But if you use them by hand, like I said, it would be, uh, be more messy, less smooth. So we'll go back to the beginning. And everywhere you see the ground over or a sharp corner, click on the point closest, press W. I like to go a little excessive with my uh, points in contact, but as you can see, it was grayed out. Uh, don't worry about the trees, they do not like to be on highways. All you have to do is uh, go to your terrain later and rebake all your trees and they will get off of your highway. You had to bake local. So this area is off the highway, but over here, it's not. And I thought I did uh, bake global, but then it just kind of uh, kind of clicked in what I did wrong. See, all trees off the highway. Go back to spacing out the points making more con points of contact. You don't necessarily have to do this, but if you want a more natural, smoother looking road, definitely the way to go. Where I see uh, where there's more aggressive uh, hills and corners, I, I like to put a lot more points. So if it's a gradual hill, not so much. Sometimes it gets irritating because you can miss just by a little bit if you zoomed out really far. And uh, you have to go back and delete each little tiny point you put in. Oh yeah, another thing is uh, save often. It's, it's definitely the way to go. After putting on this much work, I'm putting in tiny little points on a road. You definitely want to save. Um, the map option too. Uh, when you click that, when you're actually in your game and you press M, your map will pop up, and it'll be it'll look like whatever you saved it as last. And if you don't do it at all, it'll just be uh, like a fuzzy in between uh, channels on a TV. It's all gray and spotted. Coming up to the corner. You see how much it's it's changing? It's just way it's way of uh, smoothing itself out. Almost looks like it's done by a professional. Mm. 
You'll notice when I see the uh, the line drop suddenly, I start to put more dots in just so it it's smoother. If it's a uh, if it's an aggressive change, it will change really aggressively in the game, and uh, make the driving slightly uncomfortable, uh, rolling cars and whatnot. Or if you actually look, uh, this, this highway isn't, in fact, touching the ground at all. So it's good to just double check when you're putting your points in to make sure they're all connecting to the ground. Okay, so I jumped ahead a little bit. Uh, I think you guys got the point of uh, all the points on the highway, and there's not much else to say about it. We'll just take a quick rip back along, make sure everything's okay. And I'll show you how to get rid of all the grass in your highway if, uh, if you don't like it. I don't mind it. You know, post-apocalypse. Grass grows. Highways get cracks in them. But it's all up to your own discretion. What you do is go to terrain materials. Uh, it doesn't grow in grass, doesn't grow in dirt, uh, or gravel, or road. Since I'm building a road, I might as well use road. Uh, you want it to be about slightly wider than your, your highway is. You can fix it up later if you don't like it uh, by adding grass on the outside or narrowing it. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just zoom out and follow that white line as best as you can. Uh, not very good at it myself, but reach the room. Okay, so we've got the highway all filled in. Uh, we're going to build a little, little town here, and that, that'll be the rest of this uh, tutorial a little bit. Uh, building towns is always easiest on a flat surface. So I'm just trying to find a good uh, good elevation. Don't want it to be too low. I'm going to be a little too low. That's not bad. Okay, so don't worry about the fact that your road's off the ground or the trees are flying. That's that's no big deal. Fix that in a couple of seconds, and it'll only take a couple of seconds to fix. Smooth up this edge here. Don't want your uh, road to have a giant jump in it. Smooth up the whole thing. Move that along the beach. Alright, so all those points of contact that you put in earlier, they're going to come in handy. Once you click bake, they immediately go to the ground. So no matter how rough the ground is, well, to a point. Uh, but with all the points of contact, it will make it just a lot easier to, to work with. Uh, then you just rebake the trees and they're magically back on the ground. I don't like clicking the, uh, for materials, I don't like clicking the, the bake button because all that work that you did on the highway to get the grass out, it would all be gone. So I'm just going to paint the grass in here by hand. Not gonna look as nice, but it'll it'll be fine. There we go. Like I said, it doesn't look as nice, but it's good enough. Good enough for me. So I just went ahead and cleared an area of trees. Uh, to put stuff in, you go to Level, Objects. Uh, you see the whole giant list. You can change it up large, medium, small. But the best thing to use is the search bar. Um, we're going to put a gas station in because gas stations go on the side of highways, generally. Uh, so you just click it and you see in the selection bar it says gas station. Uh, you press W and that little orb. You place it with E 
and then uh, you press W and this little orb pops up and that's how you uh, choose the way it's facing, the angle it's at. Uh, when you're placing like broken cards and stuff, you can put them on top of each other, roll them over, make it make it look more real. <clears throat> From if you see a little bit of grass in there, you can just press Q and lift it up a little bit. I don't mean grass, I mean like ground. See how you can see the ground when you put it too low? We'll fix the ground in a minute. Uh, that green square on the bottom is to move it around frontwards, backwards, side to side, and it won't go up and down at all. But those other ones make it go up and down, and it, it, it's kind of weird too. Um, so we're going to go put in a uh, gas cupboard. Let's leave everybody dry in the rain. Rotate it, make it look nice, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, gas pumps, you put them in, uh, and you walk up to it with a gas can in game, and it just, you can fill up the gas cans, there's nothing special you have to do with no special item, it's just in this list. Same with a uh, fuel tank. It, it's really convenient. Um, so I'm going to put a road, uh, just a basic one, through between the gas pump and the gas station. Got to choose the right one. Don't want it too wide, don't want it too narrow. My biggest issue is I have a, uh, trouble keeping everything lined up and nice and straight. And it, it drives me a little bit crazy, but I do my best. <clears throat> it doesn't look too bad. Connect it back down to this side. Okay, so don't worry too much about all the grass you see around. We'll, we'll take care of that in a minute. Uh, right now, we're going to furnish the gas station. The shelves in there, shelves are good. Sometimes it bugs out if you're typing. Uh, it stops typing, and if you hit E, it just places the last item you had selected. So. You always want to see what the options are. Go through them one by one. It's a pretty good shelf. We'll probably use that shelf. Yep, that's a bookshelf. We don't need that shelf. Alright. Put one there. Couple there. Got to line it up nice. Post apocalypse though, so you don't really need to have it lined up perfectly. No, I just need to check out. The gas station will pretty much be done. I can't find cash registers anymore. I've misplaced them. Oh, see, there's the E. I pressed E again. Okay. Getting that corner all nice. There, gas station's done. Now we'll get rid of the grass. Same as doing it with the highway, uh, but we'll use this gravel this time. We'll do it through the road to get the gas pumps, the road, the gas station all in one sweep. Just make a, like a nice little lot. There we go. See? Ta da! No grass in our store. Alright, so now we're going to build a little outline for our, our town. It's nice to have a little square section cut off, do it with the, uh, the road. Let's try to make everything nice and square. Uh, doesn't always turn out that way, but that, that's okay. It's not about being perfect. 
just a tutorial. And again, with those 90 degree turns, you want to put a couple points in it so it's not so, uh, so aggressive. That looks nice. Always save often. I'll just uh, I'll speed through this part, and uh, we'll keep on trucking because I'm sure you can figure this out on your own. Okay, so I just wanted to address something. Uh, when you're going from a thicker highway to a thinner highway, it might be something easier to do. Uh, but something I've just taken to doing because it works out pretty well. I also do it on bridges if I'm going from a wide road to a, a bridge. So I'll just take the narrow road. Oh, damn it. That's going to mess up the road. Uh, and I just cover the, uh, the bald spots. Yeah, see, it messed up my road. It made that middle part narrow. It wasn't supposed to happen, but oh well. Because I did that. Oh well. There's probably an easier way to do this, or maybe something you can buy, but or something in the uh, the level items. I noticed there was a roundabout and stuff in there, but this will work out just fine. See, not bad. Not quite square, but good enough for me. So here we're gonna toss in some uh, some houses. Start filling up the town with buildings. That's nice up here. So let's rotate it so the front door is actually facing the road. Line it up. I like giving a little space between the uh, the highway and the house. Do uh, this one. Oh, that that's gigantic. That's too big. There we go. That's a nice little house for a nice little town. Again, Q and W. Just to change between the two. That's not bad. Yeah, I got a bit of space in the back here. Might as well toss a hockey rink in there, why not? It's Canada. Hard to get it from the circles, they just uh, the lines are just above the dirt. Something cool that I found out too, uh, when you're going through the items, there's something just called ice. Wasn't sure what that was, but definitely ice for the hockey rink. Yeah, when you walk around on it, it actually uh, slips and slides you to the slippery surface. We'll just have to raise the uh, the rink up in a second to get the lines back on them. That noise hanging up, that's all I wanted. Yeah, there we go. Out of curiosity. No, still goes to rice. So we'll toss some uh, dirt or uh, gravel underneath it. Might as well get the houses at the same time. Don't want grass growing in all those too. No grass, no grass in either of those. Well, maybe we should put a little grass in the yard. Who wants to live in a gravel yard? Fill up some of the space between the houses and the rink. You guys can figure this part out pretty well. I'm just gonna skip ahead filling all this in. All right, so I decided to put in a uh, police station here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change something up. 
I know you guys know how to put it in the house's now and rotate them and line them up and everything, but I'm going to put a different material down. But this time I'm going to do road. I'm going to show you something else you can do to take up space or just to make it more aesthetically pleasing. It also gets rid of the grass. So use the road. You're going to turn this little spot into a parking lot. Get rid of the grass, it's gonna drive me crazy. There we go. Only thing with the, the, the road and the gravel and stuff, sometimes the pebbles spawn inside your houses, but that's no big deal. You can you can actually lower that in your terrain settings. So use the lines. Not too lined up perfectly, but uh nice one there. Since that is a police station, I might as well put a couple of uh, old broke down police cars in there. Don't want them all to look generic. Not everyone parks perfectly every time. Some people drive in, some people back in. We can spawn a police car there later if we want to. Alright, let's skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to put a fire station, broke down fire truck, and another parking lot. But uh, it's just the same as the police station, so all I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so I started furnishing some of the house. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys. It's pretty much the same as doing the store. You look for it item by item. You can go through the whole list, or if you know what you want, you just type it in. Um, got a bedroom. Uh, I'm going to make this the uh, living slash dining room. It's all, it's all pretty much the same thing as the store, just uh, just different items. I'm not sure if there's a stove. I might try to make a kitchen, but I don't, I don't think there's a stove yet. But uh, you'll see the more finished product when I start showing you how to spawn items in. So I just noticed this uh, this house has a driveway, so I put some hot fire hydrants in earlier just for uh, for aesthetics. Move that a little closer to that house, and we're gonna put a little little dirt road in for this guy's garage. Same basic thing as every other road. Uh, don't want 90 degree corners. I don't want it closer to the house too, so just using E is a nice easy touch. See how that looks. Nah, let me do a little closer. There we go. That's not too bad. Corner's not too aggressive. I'm gonna slide this around a little bit. Lines up with the front door, buddy. Yeah, I like that. That's good. A little bit of earth in the garage is driving me crazy though. Oh, I don't like that road going across this road. Let's just uh, back that up a little bit. See how that looks. A little bit more. There we go. I like that. Alright, just thought I'd uh, mention that some houses have garages. If you notice before you put everything in, it's probably better. Uh, again, save often. Make your map whenever you think you're going to be playing soon. It updates the uh, the visual. Uh, I'm almost ready to start uh, putting items in. Okay. So we're going to make a player spawn. Uh, just for this test map, though, we're going to keep it relatively close to the town. But I don't want to put it right in the town. I don't want it to be too close to any uh any zombies we make. If we're gonna be in the bush, we might as well put some in the tent.
I know what tent one and two are. They are the uh, military medic and uh, military tent. Uh, tents three and four are just uh, two normal tents for camping like this. To do a player spawn, it's actually really easy. Player spawns are probably the easiest. You literally just click the guy, done. You can change his angle. See that little, uh, that little yellow area that's which way he's facing. And you can change when you change the angle, it changes the uh, the direction he's facing. Now, uh, any items that you want to put in, like a vehicle, you got to put it in. One by one, so let's make them. I like I like color coding each individual item. Just makes uh makes life easy. Um, like fire trucks, I'll put them red. Police cars, I'll put them blue. I'll put this one purple if I wanted to put something else. I put it a different color. But, uh, that's that's pretty much the uh, the basic point of a. Uh, the colors but to spawn it you got to put the table so I've made it off-roaded uh, and then uh, for the tier I just put common uh, now see how I put black off-roader if I put it down that's what's gonna spawn it'll spawn a black off-roader but if I put it more than one it'll randomly choose between one of these vehicles I'm gonna okay so I put in a whole bunch of item IDs um I didn't really mean to skip ahead this far but uh I'll try to explain it to you as we go um but those are all the off-roaders uh hatchbacks I put them all in all different colors so it'll spawn a random color at a random time so it's not always the same thing every time um, and if you don't destroy it, it generally won't spawn again, but, uh, if you, if you destroy it, you go back to where you found it, it it's likely to be there again, but you see over here, I put a, a blue one, and that's the, uh, the police, the item ID is 33, I think. Uh, the blue one's just an off-roader. Oh no, it's a hatchback. And the red one's a fire truck. So, nice and simple, color coordinated. Um, I also stocked up the store with uh, these items. I thought it was recording. It turned out I had a little issue with that. But, uh, again, color coded. The red one's a gas can. It's item ID 28. Uh, so you just go down to the item ID after doing your common tier uh, in your heading. I have everything organized so I know which one's which. Gas can, it's got gas can and it snacks at snacks. Water is water. And other drinkables, like it's uh, color-coded and named so it's easy just to keep placing items. The first time putting it in is the hard part, but then it's always there. So it's uh, it's nice to have it organized like that. I put some clothes in. Uh, I usually put clothes in bedrooms, and uh, if I have a mall, I'll make a clothing store in the mall. But uh, I put them in houses usually in the bedroom. And uh, weapons, I'll put weapons. Sometimes I'll put weapons in houses. If I do, it's usually just a knife or I'll put an axe somewhere. Uh, but usually I leave a uh, Leave axes for fire stations, uh, basic melee weapons. I'll put some knives in houses, maybe the occasional gun, uh, a rifle or something. But uh, a lot of times we'll put uh, bigger weapons in the police stations. 
So once I get all the clothes itemities in, place a few in the bedroom, and uh, I'll jump ahead to uh, putting in the weapons. All right, so I put in a, a weapons table, set in the tier, common, add, same as before. Um, now we're going to uh, put in some IDs for the guns. If you ever see me uh, take a little pause, it's because I don't know all the IDs off the heart, so i got to look over. I have them up on my other monitor, all the uh, item ID numbers. I'll put a I'll put a link to all the item IDs in the, uh, in the description, or maybe I'll just put it in an annotation. But I'll make sure it's easy to access for you guys. So I'll, I'll just make some basic uh, civilian weapons, nothing too uh, too fancy. I like to do that. I'll put a uh, civvy weapons for civilians, civvy ammo, uh, and then military weapons and military ammo. I have a little bit more control, but weapon placement still uh, kind of random, random because of uh, how many uh, types of guns you put in. But you don't want to put. I don't know, like a basic handgun. If you build a military base, you don't want to have like loaded full of basic rifles and handguns. You want to be able to put something uh, special in there for your people to find or you to find. Um, uh, Civi Ammo was pretty good too. Pretty easy. I'll show you how to do that after I put uh, put some military weapons in. It's a little time consuming, but not bad. Like I said, once you have a whole bunch of tables in, like this is just the first town, so that's why it takes so long to put all the items in. But say you start doing another town, um, all these items are already, all these tables will already be here, so you won't have to remake, put on, or re put in all the item IDs. It'll all be in the in the computer already, so you just place it where you want it. I have the uh, civilian ammo, very similar color to the civilian weapons. The, the, our military ammo, very similar color to the military weapons. It's not like having everything color coordinated, it'll make Makes organization easier. Make it a little more rare like this, I think. That's, uh, that's what I do, seems to work fine. Once you start doing it enough time, you start times you start to know uh, a lot of the IDs off by heart, which is kind of funny. I usually, like I said, I usually put a fire axes in fire stations might as well make it red oh, I forgot to put the tear in and sometimes we'll both spawn sometimes one will spawn it's, uh, pretty random like that but that's, that's what I like to do it's a nice little uh, Nice little layout. Now the zombies are what I had the most difficulty with, I'd say. Um, because you can't just put in a table and it looks like everything's in there, everything's at 100%. I'll put a bunch of zombies here, save it, and uh, we'll go We'll go try to look at them. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to put them right in front of the camp so we don't have to walk. We'll, we'll get rid of them before we start to play, but um, 
so bam loaded with zombies should be terrifying the second I shot the spawn I should just be overwhelmed right so load up the game make sure it's clicked on and uh here we go oh no zombies There's something wrong with that, isn't it? That's because uh, you have to put pathing in for all the zombies. Uh, it's it's under the navigation tab. So let's let's get rid of my zombies. Okay, now this is pretty bad. It takes a long time to uh, to do. The pathing takes forever. Uh, but you click environment, navigation. You put it in the middle of where you want to have everything, right? You, you, like, because it's, it's uh, from the center, as you can see. So you put it in the middle. Uh, if it's not quite where you like it, you just do the E thing, and you can move it around wherever your cursor is. Fake navigation, and it it takes a lot of CPU. It's very intensive, and it's definitely going to take a couple minutes. So I'm just going to skip through that. Okay, so it took over two and a half minutes to uh, to process. And while it was doing it, you notice you couldn't move the mouse around on the screen at all. But all those yellow lines means it's, mean it's done. You see that little area around the tree? That's uh, that's one where the zombies can't go. Put a couple zombies. Exit. Load it back up and see if that worked. Oh, I hear that. Oh, there he is. There's a naked zombie. Gotta have a little bit of fun. Also, if you uh, if you press, I think it's uh, V. You got a couple of uh, visual commands, but as you notice, it wasn't a naked zombie, so I'm going to show you how to fix that. That definitely took me a few minutes to figure out. Um, so that you got your white, your white zombies. Uh, I think they're just civilian zombies of the white ones. Uh, but you'll see pants. Our shirt is at a hundred percent. Pants are a hundred percent. Everything's at a hundred percent. Why? Why were they naked? Because you got to put in the ID for each item. So you click on shirt. You go down to ID. And, uh, I just had to go look up the. Uh, the IDs again. There, there's a shirt. Another shirt. Another shirt. Like I said, uh, the more items you put in. Now, this makes it so not all your zombies are wearing the same thing. Every zombie will be wearing different things. Uh, if you want them all to wear the same thing, you just put in one option for shirt, one option for pants, one option for shirt. You get it. Uh, for military zombies, I like putting their vest on, their hat on, just uh, pretty much putting everything I can. And you gotta do the same thing for pants. Like you gotta, you gotta click on pants, and then go to ID. You can't just if you try to put it in the first time, it just won't let you put it in. You gotta actually. Click on pants and then start putting in the IDs. The cat's a little more rare. So not everyone's wearing caps. Same with shades. I think it was a little less common, so it's kind of random. Now I can find a zombie with a high hand shades. You're doing good. Go toss a few of these in town. I usually go a little crazy. I load my towns up with zombies. I put them everywhere. Um, I'm probably not going to put too many in here. Just a couple. Uh, let's do the couple. I put a chess table on this table, so let's do a couple playing chess, but one in the bedroom, the other one in this one that was looking at the clothes. Uh, some zombies like to play hockey, right? Get them playing some hockey. 
Uh, now, you notice I didn't put any in the police station or the fire station. So we can make those specific police zombies and firefighter zombies. Better. One item, one item, it'll always spawn wearing those clothes. Uh, these numbers up here, I didn't address them earlier. Uh, you adjust them, that one, give, that one will give them more health. I think a police zombie would have more health than a civilian zombie. One would be tougher to kill. Let's give it a little more damage. Nothing fancy, just a bit. And uh, now it's not all the same amount for every zombie. Changes it up a little bit, right? Uh, I was going to put one in there, but since there's no access to weapons anywhere but there, I'll, uh, I'll leave that open. It's, uh, it's a pain in the ears to get weapons if the rooms are loaded with zombies. There's a fireman. Oh, capital. Red. Again, give them some extra health. Also, sometimes if you don't click on the uh, the next tab after you create the next table, after you create it, it won't actually go to it, or it'll just stay on the last one. So if you start altering it and editing it, you're just messing with the other one's settings, and I do that a lot. So that's what I was checking there. Yeah, now we got some firemen zombies. But you see the big area they can't walk inside the uh around that fire truck. More about the pathing. If you walk a zombie from this yellow lines to outside that square, it will not follow you. Um so what I end up doing eventually is having the whole map covered in these pathings. It takes forever, but it's the way to go. Let's give our guy a gas can so we can make it to town nice and easy. And let's uh let's take her for a test drive, see how it goes. Gas can, put it in the truck. Um right here. Start having an issue. I'm running an extended monitor. And for some very peculiar reason, my mouse would wander off of my main screen where the game is and uh, onto the other monitor. So every time I would click or do anything, it would uh, it would close the game screen and just put me on the other monitor. I don't think anything of it now, but it definitely uh, affects something a little later on. It, it comes into play. things first gas station how much is spawned except for a can of coke about that refreshing that's what I was saying about the spawns they don't always spawn 100% of the time like that store looked really well stocked but sometimes it's just gonna be almost empty the longer you leave the more stuff will be in it but till then there's one of the zombies wearing glasses Orange hair. Here's where I tried to get the pants, and bad things started to happen. I, uh, I click. Next thing you know, I'm on the other monitor, and I just hear the zombie killing me. It was a, it was a very, very frustrating experience. I couldn't, couldn't figure out what was going on for the life of me. Well, I knew what was going on. I just didn't know why it was going on. Pants on. Now you have a little bit of extra space. There's my hockey zombies. Let's see if any police zombies spawn yet. Oh yeah, over by the cop car. He's 
stealthy. I'll try to find a gun, hopefully a gun spawn. No, but you have ammo for a gun now, so. Let's go see if one of the axes spawns. We can use the axe to defend ourselves. Let's yeah, see one axe spawn. I'm bleeding out. Oh no. Let's just go over ham. I'm gonna die anyway. Might as well take as many as I can. Four, three, two, one, and I'm dead. Alright, well that's uh, that's pretty much everything I can show you. Uh, you'll see that the truck's not there. It's still at the gas station. But that's no big deal. It's supposed to happen, but that's my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, anything I missed, leave it in the comment section and I'll address it if I know the answer. Thank you for watching.